G'day YouTube, it's Turbo Tristan here, and in today's video, we are going for version 4.0 of my Civic. We're also gonna give this Civic a name, but first, let's go back in time and check out the other three iterations of this Civic. This is the car that's stayed on the channel, been with the channel since day one. This was originally Project GTR Killer. Now, when I got this car, it had 330,000 kilometers on it. Then we set about turbocharging the car with all of the cheapest possible parts we could find from eBay, do a full eBay build. Phase two, or version 2.0, saw the Civic get an engine bay paint. We painted it pink, and it was all pink and blue and really, really bright and really awesome. But we went with a CL9 running gear, a K24A3, which I immediately slapped a turbo on. And we ended up making 275 kilowatts at the wheels on only 12 PSI. The car became unusable on the street, so I took it to the track. It became unusable at the track because we were now going so fast, we didn't have enough brakes and tires and wheel width and everything to slow down and go through the corners plus no lsd this thing was just melting tires everywhere and that brings us to version 4.0 and version 4.0 of my k24 swap civic is now and forever will be called why that's right we went with james pumphrey's infamous which is a noise that you make every time you smash VTEC in your K series or B series or D series. One thing I'm looking forward to is driving around on the street and just seeing people read my plate and going, wah, what is wah? And then you'll see the boyfriend in the passenger seat or the driver's seat go, wah! And I think that's gonna be hilarious. I really like it. I hope you guys do too. Wah! So what is the plan with Bois? Well, that's going to get annoying really quickly. Some of you guys are not going to like this stage 4.0. As you know, we have got a lot of carbon fiber parts on the car. These are from Paisa Hub. Since we've teamed up with Paisa Hub, heaps and heaps of people have jumped on board and pre-ordered their bonnets, guards, doors, boots, roofs. If you haven't already got your carbon stuff, check out Paisa Hub, awesome, awesome stuff. We are getting a ton more carbon stuff coming for this car. We are getting two doors, a roof, a boot. So this thing's gonna weigh nothing. It's gonna be so light. Now I did weigh this a few weeks ago. It weighed 1100 kilos, I'm pretty sure, or thereabouts. We're gonna make this under a thousand kilos. We've since stripped out the seats all of the plastics, all of the carpet, all of the rubber, and we've done sound deadening. Check this out. Something that I'm very excited to try, which Zach is going first and trying, is dry icing all of the sound deadening out of the car, which surprisingly weighs a heap. When we pulled it out of Ronda, we did it by hand with a chisel and scraped it out, and we pulled out about 14 kilos of, of sound deadening out of the Accord. So what you are seeing here is dry ice. Now you go to your local BOC gas store or any welding or gas shop and you'll be able to find yourself some dry ice. It's not that expensive. It's around about $15 per kilo. You're gonna need around about 10 to 15 kilos. And as you can see here, all you really need to do is put it on top of the sound deadening, wait a minute or so and then Tap it with a rubber mallet and it'll just crack straight off. Super easy. <laughs> That's a mental, isn't it? And it makes the car super clean and super lightweight. So check this out. So here we have in the back of the car. Now you can see this car was originally green and the OGs will know that anyway from watching the videos. So we're gonna have to do something about that and that is coming up in a future video. I sold my S2000 seat. They were heavy leather and we've got some new seats going in. Throwback to a couple of weeks ago when I filmed this bit about seats. Now the next thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is racing seats. When you go to the track, 
you're under a lot more g-force than you are when you're driving through the streets this ain't a racing seat so let me show you something here you guessed it raceworks raceworks have some seats that they have released but once you get your seat and you get your seat in the car the next thing you're going to want to do is mount it now both of these seats are mounted on rails and i've got two different kinds to show you guys Alrighty, so here we have the factory rails from the integra we've cut off the old seat and we've put some strapping across that's three mil thick by 40 mil wide uh steel mild steel and we've got the raceworks brackets you can find these on the spoolup.com.au website and they've got all the different adjustable points here once we put the strapping on bolted the seat in tacked it in place then we placed the seat on top and then we tacked that in place and then took the seat off so we didn't damage it and fully welded everything up we've stitch welded all the way around and we can bolt this into the oem factory position and if you're a nice guy like zach and you want to share your car with other people you can put an adjustment on there so this is the factory rails it'll bolt straight in and it'll slide backwards and forwards giving quite a lot of adjustment and if you're like me and not such a nice guy and you don't really care if other people drive your car you can go with a pci kit which is what i did i got this from elusive racing again not sponsored i did buy it uh, but the guys at elusive always give you the best deals on this stuff anyway so go and check them out now this pci kit comes with all the mounting and everything already made up gives you plenty of different holes for adjustment even has a section for the crutch strap or the centerpiece for the harness it comes with the side mounting brackets as you can see there all fitted up with the pci logo and i wonder if this is rated enough to run the harness strap onto and then we can use the other one on the other side which is already located in the car Alrighty, so you've seen there's two types of seats in two different ways that you can mount them now this is the unveiling of my seat and i'm super duper excited for this this is some premium top shelf goodies it's going straight into my car this chair not sponsored i paid full ticket for this i didn't even ask for a discount or anything i just went straight in the guy at the shop stan is an absolute legend concept race gear in moorabbin right near the airport top shop they are your sparko dealer so they have sparko and omp the reason why i went in there and i purchased this seat is because the customer service was great i needed to test out the seats to make sure that this height here where the seat belt holes go through was enough for me so So the reason I've gone with the Sparco Evo L seat, now they make Evo and Evo 2, and the L is for large or wanky like me. So the height difference from here to where the seat belt straps, shoulder straps come through is much taller. On the regular Evo seats, it's down to where the logo is. These are just a little bit higher. Everything else is pretty much the same. So this fits me with my long torso, meaning the straps are gonna come over my shoulder and I'm not gonna be going up and over. And if I have an accident or I roll the car over, it's not gonna break my collarbone or my shoulders. Now Sparco, premium Italian brand. Everybody knows this brand and uh, I'm really proud that I bought one. I hope you like my choice of seat. It's really, really comfortable and it's very, very important that you get the right seat that suits your body. Don't just go and buy seats sight unseen and expect they're gonna fit you hope that was very helpful and i hope you guys like my choice the next big thing that's happening with this car is the engine this is the part that you guys might not like yes i call myself turbo tristan but hey right behind the camera is a turbo lancer above that is another turbo civic that you don't really know too much about and I've built plenty of turbo stuff on the channel in the past and that ain't gonna stop. We're gonna build bigger, better, better turbo stuff in the future. So if you wanna see turbos, don't forget to subscribe. This engine is coming out. This car is gonna be a race car. I have been truly, truly inspired by Gears and Gasoline. I know a lot of you guys watch Gears and Gasoline. YouTube tells me that it's one of the channels you guys watch the most. That's awesome because those guys are my idols and I really, really wanna be in their position one day. But to do that first, we're gonna take this engine out. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Any of you guys that watch my videos of me at the track probably have some criticism 
and it's fair of my driving. Although I don't think I'm a bad driver, I definitely think I am far from a good driver and going on track is the only way you're gonna find that out. Anyone can drive smoothly, nicely, quickly or fast on the street and you'll feel like a race car driver. Get on a racetrack, give it a go against other people that are also think they're a race car driver. Pretty soon you'll realize you ain't shit. So that's what I realized while racing Ronda and that's why this engine is coming out. And that brings me to this, underneath this sheet. Ta-da! Yep, another K24. Low kilometers, I got this off a really good friend of mine, Mitch. He bought this engine for himself. He had a K-swapped EG. He tells me, and I trust him because he's a good dude, has 89,000 kilometers on it. So it's pretty much, as far as CL9s go, this is a brand new engine. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with it. The kilometers are low, so that should tell you that everything about it's still good, right? Fingers crossed. But let's check out what I've done to this engine so far. Time warp, back in time, check this out. Well, I'm proud to announce we are stepping things up and we've got a whole bunch of parts here on the table. This is just a very, very small fraction of the parts we have going into this engine. All of these parts can be found at spoolup.com.au and they are the top, top shelf. We're not doing any budget cheap things anymore to this car. We are using the best of the best T7 products. These are designed and created in the UK and we have a whole bunch of stuff here. There is much more than just this going into the engine. Firstly, You've already seen this one in a previous video. I did an unboxing and unveiling of this probably about six months ago. This one was the prototype for T7. They put a much smaller logo on there now. But this is the upper radiator or upper coolant neck housing. Simplified. This is for the K20, but it also suits K24. This is the K24A3. Now this comes with all of the fittings to run all your heater hoses and everything if you choose. We're going to go ahead and fit up this thermostat housing. From T7 it comes with the O-ring. All of the fittings to either block this off or run your water hoses. I'm blocking it off. It comes with brand new stainless steel tensile rated hardware ready to bolt on. Attaching to that, we have a brand new 68 degree Celsius thermostat. This is gonna run about 10 degrees cooler than the factory one. You can get the factory temp as well. So they have two options for these and they make them with the right flange to bolt on to a K20 or a K24. And you can see here just the quality of it. They also give you the option of a hose and a hose clamp or whether you want to run your AN fittings and of course comes with all the uh, replacement seals and some brand new hardware. So we're going to get that stuck on now. So the water outlet side of things is all plumbed up now and we've got a brand new water pump which will be available soon on the Spool Up website but it's a brand new GMB replacement water pump. But one very, very interesting thing about the T7 kit is they actually leave you a space here to fit extra sensors, pressure sensors, or extra hoses and pipes and things through there, which is awesome. So we've got the titanium hardware here. We've got the kit which does uh, the timing chain cover. We've got the sump bolt kit. We've got the exhaust manifold kit and we've got the other type of exhaust manifold kit. I'll actually go over and swap those out to the intake bolts. Check these bad boys out. Titanium studs, guys. Now to top that off, we've got an RBC plenum. I do have from Elusive Racing a genuine Honda gasket. I'm gonna throw that on, I'm gonna throw this on. How good does that look already? She's coming together. Now with this manifold, I did port it out to match. When I got this, it was uh, stepped in here and it was just the factory ports, but I've just opened this up to match this flange here, which is 75 mil. Check out this next part from T7 Design. Their brand new competition fuel rail. What an awesome bit of gear. Now this can run aftermarket injectors or factory style injectors. And it comes with, you're not gonna believe this, brand new Bosch clips. It comes with the dash six fittings. It comes with the block off if you're gonna run the no return style. So all those fittings, all the little spaces, and of course, 
all of the bolts ready to bolt that down. It's just two, but comes with everything. I'm just really, really impressed. They put genuine Bosch clips in here. That's just the length that the guys at T7 will go to to make sure you have a perfect product. So even with this, there was a brand new factory gasket, which is behind here. And same down here, factory O-ring and also another factory gasket there. So the guys just really do their homework. They make everything absolutely perfect. That is so fresh and so clean. It's better than all of the other ones that I've seen on the market. Now I currently have a, another brand uh, on my car, which is the neatest and cleanest one that I ever found until the T7 design one came out. And I think you'll agree, this one is much nicer. Now you'll see we've got the titanium studs on and we've got the new exhaust manifold on. This one is from Elusive Racing. Lastly, just for the video, this is dummied on here. It's not all the way tightened up. As you can see, this whole housing is loose, but we've got the T7 Designs billet black anodized CRV mount. This is the one you need for all your K swaps. So this is the K24 mount. And the last thing to go on, which I won't show you yet, is the timing chain tensioner cover, which is also to match all of the black going on here. Ooh, back in time. We're back to the future now. And we've got the engine here. This is gonna be going in this car. Now this manifold, the RBC, also with its big brother, the RRC and the RSP are the best intake manifolds you can get for your K-Series. Now I have an RBC eBay copy in my Civic now and it required a ton of porting. It was fine for boost because we're pushing all of the air in there and I'm not gonna crap on those manifolds. It served me well. However, if you are running an NA engine, which I am, those actually lose you power up to around about give or take 20 kilowatts in the mid range. So your power curve goes like this and then back up to stock power. With this intake manifold, your power curve goes like this up to an exceeding stock intake power. Along with all your other mods, this one makes the most power. This is what everyone runs. The RRC is exactly the same. It has fatter inlet runners. Um, that has its advantages for more airflow up top. This is more of the medium one. And then there is the RSP, which is from the FN2 Type R. That one is a great upgrade as far as budget goes because it is cheaper than the RBC and cheaper than the RRC. So the RSP is a great upgrade. It is a Type R manifold. It has velocity stack trumpets inside and you can also get T7 design uh, upgraded velocity stacks for inside the manifold as well. Those are a fantastic upgrade for the budget. If you buy an RSP, and one of those trumpet kits from spoolup.com.au you're still cheaper than an RBC or an RRC. So great upgrade, more power. That's exactly what we want. We've got a whole new color scheme which I will be unveiling at the end of the build. Once I get everything all buttoned up, we'll unveil a new color scheme. With every iteration of WA, we do a new color. So we went with a pink engine bay with a blue rocker cover. We went with a fluoro yellow engine bay with a purple rocker cover. This time we're going for something totally different. It's gonna stand out. It's gonna be the only one online. There's been plenty of pink engine bays since I did that. Plenty of fluoro yellow engine bays since I've done that. Plenty of purple rocker covers since I've done that. Nobody, and I've checked, has what I'm gonna to do to this engine ever before on the internet. I'm calling it, I'm the first. And that's one other cool thing about this build 4.0. Some of the other reasons for going NA is also more lightweight. We remove the turbo, the manifold, the downpipe, the screamer, the wastegate, the intercooler, all the intercooler piping. We get that out of the engine bay. We also reduce a lot of heat in the engine bay. So that's another bonus for going on track and punishing your car for 10, 20 minutes at a time. Normally, if you have a turbo street car, you're doing 10 or 12 second pulls on the street. 10 or 12 seconds is nothing, as opposed to flat out giving it 11 tenths for 15 to 20 minutes at a time. Big difference, a lot of heat difference. 
a lot of weight difference and that's the other reason why we're going back to the NA engine in the race car Civic. Having a lighter weight engine package with less heat, less weight and unfortunately less top speed on the straights, we're going to have more usability from our DC5R brake upgrade which I've got all around this car with the five star conversions. The car's going to be light so the brakes are going to last longer as well. If I did a track day 15 minutes in this even with nice wide grippy tyres and an LSD and all that sort of stuff just the constant needing to slow down back to a reasonable speed to go through corners would just cook the brakes, boil the fluid and I'd run out of brakes, crash, die, smash my car, it would be a tragedy. So that is what we're doing in this build. This is version 4.0 of my Civic. This is going for a cage in about four weeks so I cannot muck around. I want to get everything out, painted, swapped over, I've got a new clutch, I've got a new diff, I've got new headers, I've got the new engine, the new intake. Uh, we're still running E85. We've got new color scheme for inside. We've got strut bars. We've got all sorts of parts. So many I've bought, I can't even remember them all. Uh, we're gonna do some how-tos as well. And I cannot wait to show you guys in a future video. So don't forget to spool up, bring the boost. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't hate me too much. I'm still turbo Tristan, I'm still turboing things, still got turbo cars, and uh, you're gonna love this build, and you're gonna love, wow!